So, I said that would be my last one. I lied! I want to make another one, and I'm probably going to make another one after this. Uh, so, I want to wrap a little bit to you about freedom for all and the market. So, freedom for all means just that, freedom for all. You cannot support only some people's rights to exist. You cannot support only some people's rights to speak how they want to and say what they want to. Again, defined as excluding uh, incitations of violence. And by the way, this is not some dumb schlub on YouTube making stuff up. This has been decided by the, the, by the Supreme Court of the United States five times now. And by decide, I mean, I mean reaffirmed. Um, Lenny Bruce in the 60s got busted and arrested because they said that his words made people horny and that therefore there was a danger that the people who were getting, getting horny because of his words were going to go out and rape someone and therefore he's in trouble because of what someone else might do when they hear his words. Makes no fucking sense. The only people responsible for our actions are us. Personal responsibility. Apparently it's a radical concept now, but uh, once upon a time, people did excuse me, used to take responsibility for their actions. I think I mentioned this in another video, but biological processes aside, the addict alone is responsible for inhaling the smoke or pushing the needle in. Or swallowing the liquor. Doesn't mean that there aren't biological processes that are affecting that. Uh, the, you know, the want, the desire, even the physiological need, the physiological addiction, the psychological addiction, uh, the process of breaking out of said addiction. But ultimately, it's the addict who chooses to swallow. Shoot up, inhale, throw the dice, what have you. And we cannot be paternalist because being paternalist is not a good thing and it leads to dangerous situations. So you either want freedom for everyone or you do not. You either... And this is the great thing about freedom. This is not a curse of freedom. This is not a bug of freedom. This is the great thing about freedom. Is that with freedom, there are consequences that happen. Um, so the whole drug thing. I am... I'm honestly... Just as far as personal liberties go. As far as personal liberties go. People talk about taxation and blah, blah, blah. I think, frankly, on, on some regards, depending on who's saying it, that's a bit of a smokescreen. Um, however, that is definitely a, a viable thing that I think the state will turn to at some point. Because that's just, and, and ultimately, let's face it, that's just another thing that they can tax. So they'll, they'll get very excited about that. Um, and I think once they realize, uh, the benefits of taxing versus just imprisoning people, they'll wise up. But anyways, but setting setting that aside, I, I don't know as much about that. Um, there are people much more intelligent than I who have delved into that. Uh, but merely as a personal liberty uh, argument, I think everyone should be able to put into their bodies what they what they choose. And the joy of freedom, um, I mean, this is certainly a bit of a, I guess it could be considered a bit of a bug. This is more like a, an ignorance issue than a freedom issue, frankly, um, is that, and I, and I think, I mentioned this on someone's Instagram page, but I think truly that once we decriminalize, we can study things further and get 
all the information out that needs to be gotten out. So during Prohibition, for example, I mean, if we had had the, the uh, capabilities to look at the effects of alcohol on the brain during that time period, right? But aside from that, we, we wouldn't have been able to study that during Prohibition because such studies would have been illegal to do and therefore would have been considered immoral and unethical to do. But since alcohol is legal, those things aren't immoral, unethical, or illegal to do. And therefore, we've gained a lot of knowledge about what the effects of alcohol are on the brain. So I think once we decriminalize, we can actually truthfully study the effects of marijuana and other drugs on the brain. Because right now, as it stands, both the prohibitionists and the people who want everything legalized have significant things to gain from pushing their respective narratives. And it's really funny. This is how you know uh, a tribalist on this issue. This is how you know uh, an ignoramus on this issue is if they'll put, oh, well, see, uh, I've got 20 articles here from Herb Life saying that marijuana is good for your brain. They don't even consider, <laughs> they don't even, I, I, I don't think I actually made that up either. I think Herb Life is actually a fucking, uh, uh, website publication, what have you. Uh, but they, they don't even consider the source because they're so ignorant. They're so willfully stupid that they don't even have the cognitive faculties to understand why a publication called Herb Life, Herb Life, Herb Life, did I just say Herb Life? Wow, that was embarrassing. Why <laughs> they don't even have the they don't even have the reasoning skills to comprehend why a publication called Herb Life would be peddling that marijuana is a miracle drug that has no negative side effects. When that logically cannot be true. Everything has side effects. Everything has consequences. The only place where no such, where, where everything is all good all the time is heaven. And the only place where everything is all bad all the time is hell. So, on that, um, I think we'll end up splitting this into two videos at this point, but... Um, so just on a personal freedom note, I think everyone should be allowed to put things into their bodies, but, but, and this is not something you can enforce. This is just the, I guess we'll, we'll refer to it kind of facetiously as the bug of freedom. Uh, the, the bug of freedom is that the onus is on everyone who ingests marijuana, LSD, crack cocaine, the onus is on them not only to understand the risks that they are taking for themselves, but to obtain the knowledge of what has happened to others. And the issue is that far too many people don't bother to obtain the knowledge and don't bother to weigh the risks. When I started smoking, which I only did for a few months, um, I'm at this point like two months off it or something like that. Um, when, I, when I first started smoking, for example, I knew very well exactly what I was getting into because, again, it's been decriminalized and it's regulated, and we know just exactly <laughs> what tobacco does. We know it's shitty for you. But even tobacco, which has been roundly demonized even tobacco which has been roundly demonized and i'm not going to sit here and defend tobacco and nicotine so any any uh tobacco prohibitionist who's watching this is going to get into a tribalist mindset and think that i am but i'm not um but but <laughs> nicotine does boost your 
why did I just forget the word? Uh, boost all the neurotransmitters in your brain. I almost forgot the word neurotransmitters, and I was going to look like a jackass. Uh, <laughs> nicotine boosts all the neurotransmitters in your brain, which is why it feels really fucking good when you smoke. Which is why a lot of people uh, with a, a brain chemistry more geared towards depression and, and imbalance in the brain that is uh, more susceptible to depression are more likely to smoke and why those who are depressed, have depression, what have you, uh, do seek out smoking and it feels good to them. Um, also, it's been suggested that, although I've read this point countered that said, oh, well, the, only the, that, that was a point put out by the tobacco companies, which I can't, I haven't found anything more on, on either end to support either claim, but... I did read something that suggested that um, nicotine calms something in the mind of the schizophrenic. Um, and one of the guys I work with has schizophrenia and he smokes like there's no tomorrow. And there is a correlation between schizophrenia and smoking. Um, but the point is that with the decriminalization of such things and the regulation of such things, we can better study these things. Now, as far as a personal level, obviously, even if we are, you know, studying these things ethically and, and morally and legally and it's controlled, still, you have to take the personal responsibility and personal risk. And too many people are too fucking ignorant to, to do that. Um, and I think that's really unfortunate. But ultimately, they'll be the ones who end up paying for it. <clears throat> Which... Um, I think it could be a, 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 a could an argument could very well be made to say, well, let's reconsider the age of consent for th a lot of things and reconsider the age at which one can purchase alcohol and tobacco products because the brain is not fully formed until age 25. The last that I've heard, maybe that's changed. Uh, but at any rate, um, so again, and I'm leaving all of these things kind of open and I am thinking these things out because for the last, for the, for the millionth time, I, the, my, my whole point on this channel is to have a discussion. Um, I would like that anyways. Um, but freedom for all, all these people should be able to make those decisions and, as someone who lead, leans more towards a, a Buddhist way of thinking, my only hope for everyone who decides to partake in anything, for that matter, uh, is that it lessens their suffering more than increases their suffering. And unfortunately, the large you know number of uh, use of illicit drugs just does tend to increase suffering and yes a good portion of that is because of laws and restrictions on of of the state um and you know not only just leading to arrest but the fact that these things are illegal means that it's not regulated properly and then people get you know um cut you know uh bad doses of things and and things like that um but I, I think that everyone should be able to make that decision for themselves. But I would just uh, implore them to do just that. Make the decision for themselves and all of that and, and, and all that that entails. Considering carefully the risks that they are taking. And let's not pretend that there are no risks with substance use of any kind let's not pretend there are no risks with anything because there are risks with everything driving is one of the most dangerous things you can do driving is one of the most dangerous things you can do and yet every single day damn near every single one of us gets into a car whether we're driving or not we all get into a car at some point in our lives at least <laughs> um and that's very dangerous, but we all agree 
maybe not cognitively every single time we get into a car we probably don't all think okay I'm gonna die and by getting into this car and clicking the seatbelt I click that I accept the terms and conditions of this agreement but by being in a car you are agreeing to the risk that you are taking of getting t-boned just like when you fly you are agreeing to the risk however small it may be of an airplane crash or you're agreeing to the much more likely risk that you'll sit next to someone who's fucking obnoxious or god forbid has a crying baby uh, <laughs> but all of these things should be perfectly allowed once again, so long as you're not violating anyone's rights in order to do any of it. But you should be honest with yourself about the risks that you're taking. And if you can't be honest with yourself, then, I mean, ultimately you'll end up uh, reaping what you sow in that. You know, if you if you are not informed about what alcohol does and, and, and you don't feel the need to be informed about what alcohol does and you drink an entire bottle and then you have severe kidney problems or, or liver problems or you don't fucking wake up the next day because you didn't know how you'd fucking react to it and now you're fucking dead well you were the one who took the risk you were the one who didn't much care what happened to you in that moment because you wanted to be hedonistic and egoistic and other people much smarter than I have talked ad nauseum about both of those uh, ways of living um, but freedom for all and freedom you know we will make this one long video I don't care and freedom of speech because you support one person's right to say stupid things you logically have to support another person's right to say stupid things or things that you find stupid because you can't say because and this is the alarm it's alarming to me that so many people cannot put this together that you find something offensive today and you want it banned tomorrow what you are saying is going to be found offensive by someone else and now that should be banned and you can't say that that's not fair or that can't or won't happen because you set the precedent over here by censoring another person. And people, and again, I will bring it back to mental illness because it's a mentally ill way of thinking. They can't logically go through all the, they can't properly reason everything out and go through the whole scenario. And so they can't connect that uh, that that precedence that things that happen in the past predict the future or set the standard so to speak for the future that's not a logical facility that they uh, possess I guess anyways that's all for now uh, yeah I'll probably do another video why not uh, speak, listen, understand, don't bash people's heads in with bricks, don't throw rocks at people, and don't run over people with cars, and uh, all the rest of it.